the principal makhraj of uh, the 17 makhraj existing in the uh, Arabic language letters. So among the five principal makhraj, one of them is called Makhraj al which is the oral and the throat cavity. And we have talked about the three letters in the previous video. You can go and uh, listen and uh, watch the presentation. Today, inshallah, uh, we are going to talk about the second one, which is called Makhraj al-Halq. And al-Halq represents the first Makhraj coming after the lungs and after the chest where the air coming out before reaching the area, the oral cavity, which is the mouth. So this is called Makhraj al-Halq. So I'm going to talk about it, uh, about the three throat points of articulation. There are three points and divided into six letters. And talk about these uh, letters of this Makhraj. And uh, thirdly, I'm going to talk about the common mistakes when performing the letters of this Makhraj. So uh, when we read uh, Quran and uh, we try to pronounce some of the Arabic language letters, specifically if it's coming from this Makhraj, we'll find out what is the common mistake in pronouncing such uh, letters uh, uh, wrongly. Last time with the same image, the position of the tongue and where in Arabic language most of the uh, makharij and most of the letters of Arabic language produced by the tongue but there are some of these letters w that are or which are produced from the throat and some of from the lips so in between there will be the tongue the roof of the mouth and so on or the epiglot epiglottis uh, which is around here now the flowing of the air will come of course through this side then reaching that side of the throat when the uh, uh, meeting of the parts of the uh, uh, the parts of the body of the throat uh, produces if it stops either at the first position here or in the middle or at the end which is uh, called uh, uh, one of the division the ulama mentioned uh, the farthest distance and the closest distance it's called aqsa al-halq wa adna al-halq al-halq means the throat in arabic language so aqsa al-halq means the farthest distance from the mouth that's what they mean aqsa uh, we say al-masjid al-aqsa means the farthest mosque which is uh, far from al-masjid al-haram and the adna which is uh, al uh, adna means close and close to the mouth close to the maharij of the tongue and the mouth and so on but in between it's called wasat wasat which is in the middle so there is adna al halq there are points there there are two letters coming out and in the middle there is uh, in the middle two letters also and also there are uh, aqsa which is uh, the farthest distance from the mouth there are two letters of Arabic language coming from then whenever the uh, uh, that position and the vibration of the two uh, waters the two uh, create a sound by hitting each other then what happens sound flows and comes from their mouth so you say or or akh or agh and so on so this is the way the air comes here and then produces this uh, uh, by uh, meeting and vibrating and meeting each other the two parts of the body then uh, produces a sound by bringing the air flowing and coming out here so this is uh, the description uh, generally of this uh, makhraj now we're gonna see uh, in the next uh, picture the letters of the makhraj uh, al-halq I have made a proverb or uh, a sentence that has a, a meaningful sentence that collecting and uh, grouping all the six letters of Makhraj al-Halq, the throat cavity, uh, where the points of articulation, and the letters are uh, Ghain and uh, Kha, which is at the f uh, closest distance of the uh, mouth and then at the farthest distance uh, from the mouth you find uh, the Hamza and the Ha and in the middle is the Ain and the Ha now uh, the letters, the six letters of Arabic language are produced uh, in this manner uh, by uh, making the Sukun on the letter 
and then you will find out if you put your hands around where the vibration and the sound is echoing you will find out that makhraj so for example I've put sukun and ghain and I put a alif or a hamza uh, before that and say ah ah or ir ah as you can see there closer to the mouth ghain and kha they closer to the qaf as well ah ah aqa the farthest distance you can see ah uh, 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 and in the middle is the ain and the ha which is a little bit hard for a, a, a lot of people uh, who are non arabs by saying ah uh, ah uh, especially when they come close to each other some of these letters also it is really hard also for some arabs who are not trained or who have been far away from uh, practicing the maharij of arabic language the ulama have grouped them all of them in a meaning, meaningful sentence it says akhi haka ilman hazahu ghayru khasiri akhi oh my brother haka take a knowledge and if you have taken this knowledge you have got and uh, uh, you have got something that you will never be or you will not be in a loss أخي هاك علما حازه غير خاسري أخي the beginning of أخي is a همزة and it is here هاك it's a ها starting by the bottom علما is a عين ح حازه غير has the غين خاسري is the خا so these are the letters of uh, letters of مخرج الحلق مخرج the throat so we're going to see inshallah in the next what are the uh, common mistakes uh, that are uh, which are made while reciting the Quran through uh, producing these uh, letters in a wrong مخرج or uh, wrongly produced by giving a different quality or different attribute mistakes when sounding the letters of مخرج الحلق uh, we start by the Hamza for example the Hamza as uh, we have discussed come from the farthest distance of the throat which is close to the lung and it's not uh, close to the mouth uh, so the common mistake by saying this uh, Hamza or uh, you say the Alif but it's actually it's Hamza saying uh, ah so there is nothing called in Arabic language such thing called with the attribute of full mouth by saying ah but it is a uh. now if you try to say ah by opening too much your mouth uh, not sidewise but uh, vertically then the producing of this sound of ah will come like that but if you do the opposite by giving it sidewise or I say uh, into my right hand and my left hand I put them next to my mouth and uh, uh, standing vertically and I would say for example saying uh, uh. so if you have the habit of saying ah ah so for example if I read this I say oh 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 uh, especially the letter well even uh, the common it is common even with some countries in Arab country that they will say harful wow they don't say harful well but actually it is well and not wow uh, so it is not a heavy letter it is a strong letter of course which you have to precise so if you say al mu min al mu Min. So you have precisely to make this letter strong and show it, but in the same manner, it is not a heavy letter by saying ah or aw. Oh. So this letter, whenever it comes in front of another letter that is a full mouth, such as sad, then you have to be careful not to make the alif mufakham and a heavy letter. So, for example, if I want to read. Uh, this uh, second uh, word which is mentioned here أصابعهم. so the sad is مفخم, which is a heavy heavy letter among the seven letters which are full mouth then this one is an empty mouth so you would say أصاب. that's wrong you don't say أصاب. you would say أصاب. صاب. so bring your teeth together for the sad hold them together and make a full mouth but 
for the Hamza, slightly open sideways your mouth without stretching too much. So you just say eh, eh. I'm saying eh. Similarly with the word which is here, uh, as you can see the third letter is Mufakham, uh, which is a heavy letter, then you say, don't say Aba. Abasarahum and not Aba A A Abasarahum. So this is one of the mistakes common in Hamza and uh, there are many mistakes uh, common with the people who do not know how to pronounce the letters who do not do not have control or have not read the, the Quran from the Mashaykh and through reading to the Mashaykh and the ulama and the Qurra or the Imam of the Masjid then you will inshallah get that experience and control of the articulation so the first thing in the Quran to be careful is not to say A'udhu, A, it's A'udhu the second is word of Allah do not say A, Allah, A it's Allahu, a, Allah, la, la mufakham, but the alif is muraqqaq. Another example in this ayat, for example, you would say uh, in this ayah, ذَلِكُمْ أَقْسَطُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَوَمْ So, ذَلِكُمْ a, this is the qaf, is a heavy or full mouth, similarly the ta. So when people read fast and without controlling the maharij and the sounding and the attribute of the letter, they will say, ذَلِكُمْ أَ ذَلِكُمْ أَقَ أَ ذَلِكُمْ أَقَ سَطُ أَقَ سَ سَطُ ذَلِكُمْ أَقَ سَطُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَوَمْ وَأَ وَأَ وَأَقَوَمْ So instead of saying وَأَ to be careful, Another uh, verse in the Quran, وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا خَطَأَ خَطَأَ Not خَطَأَ آ So to make the Hamza آ, it's not آ, it's آ. خا, yes. طا, yes. It's full mouth. Both of them are full mouth, but not this one. Now, the other mistake which a lot of people make, قَلْقَلَ on the Hamza, because it is uh, one of the letters which is really hard to make with a sukoon. So if I say, for example, this uh, example, وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا مُؤْمِنًا So this is wrong. Do not make that mistake by making قَلْقَلَ وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا This is قَلْقَلَ So what do you need to do that? Give it a little bit of time. Properly sound it. وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا خَطَأَ مُؤْمِنًا خَطَأَ Instead, Instead of saying, وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا خَطَأَ خَطَأَ That's wrong. خَطَأَ Similarly, the last example, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَ and هَا Both of these letters, this Hamza and the هَا have to be مُرَقَّق which is empty mouth. So, only the لَفْضُ الْجَلَالَ have to be full mouth. وَلَوْ شَاءَ Not وَلَوْ شَاءَ Allah, Allah, ولو شاء الله. So, جزاكم الله خيرا for listening, and I hope I see you the next episode in the next presentation video of the Maharish to continue the common mistakes of the. There are around fourteen that I have mentioned, one or two actually. There are another twelve I should mention also regarding the ha and the ha and غين.